Yo guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to show you how to get the best FPS for Minecraft. I'm making this video because I see a lot of people that have systems that are good enough to handle at least 60 FPS but are struggling to get it. Most of these steps will also work for other games but some of these are specifically aimed for Minecraft itself. I personally, when I just got this PC, I got around about 500 FPS which is more than enough of course but after I did the settings I could get like 1500 or even 2000 FPS which is really good with just some settings. It's basically free performance. All the things I'm showing in this video are free so don't worry about spending any money. Also a thing that is free is subscribing to the channel, it would help me out a lot and liking this video is also really appreciate it. It shows me that you want to see more of these kind of videos, I have a lot more ideas. So yeah, let's start this video. First of all, we want to use something else than just vanilla Minecraft. Um, I use Optifine, um, just for Minecraft 1.16 and stuff. This helps already a lot, so make sure to use that. You can also use some clients, I have two here. Lunar Client and Batline Client. So Lunar Client is only for 1.7 and 1.8, so basically a PvP client, because that's with all PvP and stuff. I use this when I'm playing on 1.7 and 1.8, this gives me a lot more FPS, it's really great. Um, this is also Batline Client, also a 1.8 client, but you also have this for 1.16, 1.50 and stuff. But there is one thing I don't like about this client, which is it installs um, a system file that is always running even if you're not playing on the Batline Client. Which means that if you're doing anything else, playing any other game, watching YouTube or whatever, the thing is always running and um, it's an anti-cheat, which prevents you from installing any hacked client, which is a good thing, but it does um, take some of your performance and if you're on a really low end system, this can make a difference. So depends on what you want, but I recommend a Lunar Client if you're playing on 1.8 and I just use Optifine if you're playing on any other version. There is a link to Optifine, it's really easy to install, there is a 1.16.1 version here, there is also 1.16.2 in the preview versions, and how to download it is I click on download or mirror, the only difference is that if you click on mirror, you can instantly download it, if you click on this, it will ask you if you want to download, if you click on download, you will just get some ads and wait 5 seconds, so I don't know why you want to do that, and the download is really simple, just click on install and that's basically it. So now we're in the game itself, I'm playing on 1.16.1 in Optifine and I'm going to go over all the best Optifine settings for performance and this should also affect your FPS a lot. Um, I am currently at around about 500 to 700 because I'm recording, when I'm not recording I can easily hit 1000 but that's not needed of course, I usually limit my FPS to around about 250. Uh, because I don't see a difference. I can even put this to 200, but whatever. First of all, we are going to set our graphics to fast for the best performance. If you um, leave your mouse there, it will you will see a black box and it will say which is the slowest and the fastest and stuff. And this is for most things. Smooth lighting, you can also see which is the fastest and the slowest. If I put, put this to off, you can see my game looking really terrible. That's one of the things, of course, your game will look a little bit worse if you get the best settings. Uh, minimum, um, I don't really see a big difference between minimum and maximum, so I just put this on minimum. As you can see, if you see this one, um, it doesn't say anything about faster or slower, so I generally keep this at 100% because I like it more. You can see a lot of stuff. The brightness doesn't affect performance, dynamic lights can definitely affect performance, I like to turn this off. Um, shaders, of course, turn this off, these can be really laggy but also look really cool. Um, I generally don't play with shaders, but I mean they can look really cool if you have a good PC. So then the details is a really important tab. Um, if you set your graphics to fast and everything here is on default, like for example these, they will all be on fast, you can also change them to fast or fancy yourself. Most of these work like that. Keep your mouse on these, you will see the black box again. It says faster or slower, I like to turn my clouds off, that's the fastest. Trees, I just like the fancy trees as you can see. If I put this to uh, fast, you, you can see through them and I don't like that, but it does um, affect FPS. If you have a bad PC, you should definitely use the fast option. Um, and you can do this for, this for all of these, you can see, turn off sky, it will be faster, um, turn off sun and moon, it will be faster, turn off fog, it will be faster, basically for all of these things, some of them don't, you can see fog start, this usually doesn't affect performance, so you can choose what you want, biome blend, this can, um, as you can see, higher values may generate significant lag spikes, 
I usually turn this down to 3 times 3 you can do this to off and if we go into different biome as you can see the sea this is a beach biome and this is a deep lukewarm ocean and as you can see here you can see where the biome where the biomes change and this doesn't look too good but it is it can affect your fps by a lot tap animations if you turn this all off this will again you can get a lot more fps by this then render distance um i have eight chunks i some i usually do 12 as you can see too tiny is the fastest so if i put this to two i can get a lot more fps as you can see, now I get easily like 700 to even 800 maybe. Yeah, there we go, 800 FPS. So that's that's already a lot more. So if you have a really bad system, I recommend turning this all the way down. And quality, as you can see, it works the same again. So to turn everything to fastest. But if you really like one of these and you can still get a good amount of FPS, then yeah, do whatever you want. And performance, this is one of the most important things. I recommend turning this all on. But if you want the most FPS, turning smooth FPS off can help. But there is a slight chance that you can get some stuttering in the game. Because of, like, for example, if you get 100 FPS, it can basically render the 100 frames in half a second. And then the other half, half a second, it doesn't do anything. It's not going to be like that, of course, but smooth FPS just help, helps a little bit with that. As you can see, now I have 600 FPS. When I turn smooth FPS on, I can easily get 900, but again, I can get some stuttering. I don't think that will do anything with 900 FPS, but whatever. Then one thing, the last thing I recommend is um, normally this is at current full screen mode. You can turn this up to whatever your screen is. Uh, mine is 1920 by 1080. You can also turn this down to like 1600 by 900, and if you quickly go into full screen again you can see this resolution is lower but this can definitely increase some fps so do whatever you want with that i like to keep it at my normal resolution so that's it for the optifine settings one thing you can do is um, go to your go to your minecraft launcher and then go to installations and i was using this version here and you can go to more options here you can change the amount of ram that you allocate to your game um, I add it to 3 gigabytes. Usually I do it at 6 gigabytes because I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. I recommend using like one third of it if you want the best FPS. You don't need it, of course. But the default is like two. You can get a bit. You can get a bit more performance out of your game if you do more. But if you, of course, only have like if you have like 8 gigabytes of RAM, um, then I recommend doing like three or just default two. But three is also also works if you have only 8 gigabytes. Okay, now we're going to go over another really important thing, which is um, the NVIDIA control panel. First, I'm going to show you how to install it. And most PC PCs should have it, but um, still make sure to follow along. Um, so if you don't know what graphics card you have, you can just press download now. Um, this link is in the description. I am going to choose my graphics card. There are many ways of finding your graphics card. Um, but I have a uh, GeForce RTX 2060 Super, Windows 10 64 bits, and now I'm going to start search. And it found some stuff. And what you want to do is download the GeForce Game Ready driver. Get download and download now. When that's downloaded, you can double click on it and accept. Then you can click OK, it will do some stuff. Okay, so now um, the installer is opened and you can select whatever you want. Uh, graphics dri driver and GeForce experience or just the graphics driver. I like both, so I'm going to go with that. Then you want to select custom installation and hit next. You could, don't need to change anything, but click perform clean installation. What this will do is uh, remove all old versions of your uh, graphics driver. And it will also restore all the settings, but we're going to go over the settings for the best one, so don't you don't need to worry about that. Then you click next and it will install. I'm not going to do that because I have all the settings already. And yeah, and I'll see you when you're done. So when you're done, you may need to restart your computer. But, and if you did that, you can right click on your desktop and you will see here NVIDIA control panel. You can click that and it can take a little bit before it starts. And we're going to go from the top to the bottom. So first you want to click um, check use advanced 3D image settings. And then you can click take me here. 
Um, and now you can copy all the settings I have and I'm going to go over a couple of these. So copy all of these, make sure the ambient occlusion is set to performance. Um, so copy all of these, then these is open GL rendering, select your graphics card. That's really important. Uh, this one is one of the most important ones, prefer maximum performance. And that's really important, so make sure to select that one. Texture filtering this is also a really important one, set it to high performance. And then just copy all of these. Oh, by the way, the max frame rate, I accidentally skipped it, but you can, if you want the smoothest experience possible, I recommend turning this on and setting this to your um, refresh rate, mine is 60. I, sh I will show you how to get that, so go to settings, or window settings, go to system. Then uh, in the display tab, you can go down to advanced display settings. And here it says, says your refresh rate. Um, if it's like 59 or something else weird, you can go to uh, um, display adapter properties for display. For your display, go to monitor. And then here you can select the highest possible. Um, it's really recommended to do that. Um, mine started on 59 for some reason and it can do some weird stuff. So make sure to select the highest one possible. And then uh, you also have vertical sync. You, this is basically the same um, as I said. It will make your screen um, run at your refresh rate, but it's just a little bit easier to use. And I think this is even better than the limiting your FPS. But I still like to keep this off because my screen is 60 hertz, so it will do everything at 60 FPS. And then copy all the rest. And make sure to click on apply to save all the changes. Then go to configure surround and set this to your, gra to your graphics card. Uh, usually it's like auto select and then it will use your integrated graphics if your CPU has this and this can improve a lot of FPS. And I think a laptop only has these three. By the way, if you have a laptop somewhere here, it will say auto select. You should change it to your uh, graphics card, but I don't have that option. So let's go to the next thing, which is CCleaner. So there is a link in the description on how to download it. Just click free download and it's not really too difficult. And when you click and when you open it, you will see this. Just start hell check and close all pro programs. I'm not going to do that because I have all the links open and stuff. And what this will do is check for some stuff. As you can see, I did this like a couple of minutes ago. So make it better. And now. It, it removed some trackers and also some space and then go to registry scan for issues and I don't think there will be any issues because I did this very recently. Oh, it, it, it's, it's still found too. Fix select issues. It, want, it asks you if you want to back up your registry. Um, just select no and fix all selected issues. Um, if you're doing this for the first time, this will find a lot of issues and it can definitely improve some performance. Then you want to download another program called Power Control. Um, here's a link, and you can install Power Control. And uh, when you're opening this for the first time, this will probably not say that um, the profile is installed, so make sure to install it. And then select it here um, and make it active. If this for some reason doesn't work, uh, for example, if I have this one, uh, Ultimate Performance is just a normal one my PC has. Uh, just make sure all these sliders are 200% and everything here is on disabled and then apply and make sure it's active. Also make sure this is enabled, as you can see when PC is active use this one, when PC is idle also make sure to use bit some highest performance and press ok and just and then you can close it and it will always be active here, you can see all CPU cores are active. What this does basically is makes, makes all the CPU cores active, what it says. Windows has something weird called core parting and it will disable some cores and that's just something really useless so you get less what you paid for. Really dumb but whatever. Now I quickly want to go over um, deleting your temporary files. So what you want to do is click Windows and R and you will get this run box and then pre um, type percent temp percent and enter and you will come in this file I again I deleted this quite recently so just do control a and delete you can have a lot of files you can clear hundreds of gigabytes it can't delete everything because it may be in use at the moment 
but it's recommended to clear this like once a week or something or once a month whatever you want really and while you're at it delete everything in your recycle bin this can also clean a lot of stuff now let's go into the window settings you can do a lot of stuff there um, so first we're going to go to system go to notifications and actions Make sure to turn this off and unselect all of these boxes because notifications can definitely reduce some of uh, performance. Then go to privacy and then scroll down until you find background apps. Background apps can again reduce a lot of performance so make sure to turn, th turn this off. Then go to apps right here and go to startup. Um, I would recommend turning most of this off unless you really want it. Um, for example Skype. This is always on when you start your PC and I never use Skype, so I have it off. And it is high impact, it says it's no impact because it's turned off, but if this is on, it will say high impact. Some of these are quite important, so don't turn everything off, but like Cortana, I don't need that, the C cleaner. I like to use it, but I don't want to do just waste resources if I'm not using it, so I turn it off as well. Then you can go to gaming and go to Xbox Game War and turn this off, also turn this off. And yeah, this can reduce a lot of uh, performance. Also, there is something else, NVIDIA Game Overlay. So go to GeForce Experience. And this is one of the things that we installed. And when this is open, you go to settings and make sure to um, turn off in-game overlay. That's just one of the things. Then we're basically done with the settings. Um, there is also one really good thing you can do. This can speed up your PC by a lot. And this is um, Windows Deep Loader. So you can go to this link in the description, go to code and then download zip. Then in downloads, you will see the Windows Deep Loader Master. Just open it and you need to have WinRAR or something. Um, and then just drag it in here. That's just an easy way of extracting it in my, in my opinion. Um, I already have it here, so that's why it asked that. You can click to open it, and then you have this Windows 10 Deep Loader GUI. I like to use this one, and if you open it, you see a lot of stuff here. Just do Control A to select everything, and Control C to copy everything. Then we want to go over to Windows PowerShell. As you can see, right here. If you open it, you can just do Control V to paste everything. Now we're pasting everything in that file, and press Enter. As you can see it will get this GUI here and you want to press remove all bloatware and it will do some stuff it's and we'll just wait until it's done so it says finish all tasks and this can improve your imp performance by a lot you can also do some other things like disable Cortana I did that and it has been disabled I also enable dark mode and you can do a lot more stuff I really like this program so just close it for now and I think that will be it for this video. So yeah, hope, I hope you get a lot more performance. For me, as I said at the start of the video, I, get, I got like triple or maybe even quadruple performance. For you, it might not be as insane. Um, I tried this on my laptop. I used to record on a laptop. But instead of like 150 FPS, I got like 200. So it still worked and it's still really useful to have a little bit more FPS. But yeah, I, still, I really hope you enjoyed. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more of this kind of content. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.